Elizabeth Clare Prophet preaches the everlasting gospel and brings to you the true teachings of Jesus Christ and the illumination of the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. It is most assuring to note that the very last chapter of the very last book of the Old Testament opens the door in prophecy for the coming of and our acceptance of the Son of Righteousness who appears with healing in his wings. Thus, with these final words from Malachi, we await the birth of Messiah. And we understand that Messiah to be not only the person of Jesus the Christ, but that universal Christ, whenever and wherever that Christ is born in the hearts of God's sons and daughters. 2,000 years have transpired. Some are still waiting for Messiah. Some know that he has come, and yet in his coming, they have not internalized the God flame, and therefore, for all intents and purposes, he might as well have not come at all. We know that the history of Earth is millions of years old. We also know that our souls are a continuous stream of consciousness that we have lived before many times and in the course of our living and dying and being born again we ourselves destined to be co-creators with god as his sons and daughters have set in motion by free will causes that have now become effects sowings that we are now reaping you who come here are not looking for a faith cure by belief or miracles beyond your understanding of the science of the spoken word itself. You have come here because you do not fear the accountability for your life. When you look in the mirror each day, you do not curse the God that has made you, but you look with joy at opportunity. This day I am reborn. This day I can recreate myself because God lives in my heart. He has placed there the divine spark, and that spark contains even the potential of the great central sun for my realization of who I am, and therefore the sun, light of God within me, is the very presence of that healing son of God. You have desired to know the why of the condition for which you seek a cure. And you have not been afraid to look at the deeds of the past, which are not so nice, that all of us have engaged in at one time or another, bringing upon ourselves conditions now, which become a challenge of initiation. What is an initiation? It is a very difficult circumstance which confronts us in life. We cannot get around it. We try to go to the right or the left. We try to dodge it, but we cannot escape it because it comes as a manifestation of our karma. Our karma is our initiator, teaching us lovingly, though perhaps sternly, how we have misused the law of life in the past, misused God's energy, and now we have the supreme opportunity in this condition to undo that cause, to balance it, to rise above it, and to become the masters of our destiny. This is why we are born in the earth. This is why we are here. We are joyous about our challenge. We are eager to strengthen our hearts and minds and our will to meet each succeeding one. And as we do, we feel triumphant and joyous, and we know that step by step, we are transcending the former self. This is the joy. And what is the end of all of this, and what is the purpose? Why, the very purpose is that we might cleanse the cup, empty ourselves, of that which is unnecessary, be filled with 
light for what? To give to others in need. I am my brother's keeper is the byword of keepers of the flame. We expand the flame not for our private use, but because we see a whole wide world hungry, dead and dying, diseased and in pain, crying out for relief. And we look to ourselves and we say, how can we help these people? And God echoes back his cry, physician, heal thyself. Thus we understand the healing path as a path of love, whereby we may become greater instruments of light. Every single cell of your body is a cup intended to be filled with light. We know we have four vehicles of consciousness. We have a mind, which we call the mental body. We have the emotions, which is the desire body. We have our physical body, which we wear as the point of integration of these. And then we have a vast memory body, the etheric body, which is also the garment we are clothed upon when we journey out of the physical body to higher octaves. We know that the causes of the effects we see in the physical form are recorded in the etheric body as though they were on a giant computer. We know that that recording affects the way we think, affects our minds and our emotions. And finally, the physical body will show the results. Therefore, those who pursue a path of healing, pursue the purification of the physical body by prayer and fasting, by fresh raw foods and vegetable juices, fruit juices, the proper proteins, the proper balance of exercise, fresh air, taking in the light of the sun. But there is a cleansing of the mind and the soul and the emotions. And that cleansing comes through the invocation of the violet flame, the all-consuming fire of God, which also does erase the records of sin and the misuse of light in the etheric body. It is the power of the Holy Ghost promised in both the Old and the New Testaments by the prophets and by Jesus and by Paul. With this process ongoing, we understand that the balancing of karma itself may be necessary for the healing of our diseases. We do not shrink from this assignment. We dive into it. We accept the very teeth of the challenge. We are grateful to have the instrument of the science of the spoken word, which you have been exercising this evening, and we are grateful especially for that violet flame, the fiery baptism that does not destroy us, but recreate us in this hour of the seventh dispensation of Aquarius. This gracious gift of the violet flame comes from the master, Saint Germain. Thus it is a mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit, and it is the means whereby the prophecy is fulfilled I will remember their sins no more. When there is no more cause, there can be no more effect. If the cause of your illness is poor diet, when you remove that cause and get on a right diet, you will see the removal of the illness. But some illnesses of the mind and of the soul and of karma do not affect the physical body, but the soul is tormented. We understand that these conditions also are erased by the sacred fire. We teach at Summit University an understanding of demon possession of discarnate entities, that is, the astral sheath of those who have passed from the screen of life but have not gravitated to the higher octaves. The large cities such as Los Angeles have many disembodied individuals or the mere shell of the individual, which is the sheath of the astral or emotional body. The consciousness that is contained in these shells does affect the mind, does influence crime, insanity, and the torment of addictions. 
Thus, those who pass from the screen of life as drug addicts may have their astral bodies influencing those beginning to take drugs. We find, therefore, in the study of life and of healing that to understand the condition and to be able to go to the cause and core, which may be varied, is the key to the healing itself. This key was taught in many ways by Jesus. He healed by casting out demons. He healed by the command, by a tremendous response to the faith of the individual, by taking clay with the spittle and making a certain ointment for the eyes. And in unpublished works, apocryphal works, he is known to have pursued the entire program of the Essene gospel of fasting and internal cleansing and various types of the uses of foods. Some people think that even the modern discovery of wheatgrass and its juices was known by Jesus. Thus we realize that healing is a study and a science. We have gathered this evening to partake of Christ's cup of healing to all people. I would like to read to you this prophecy of the coming of the Son of Righteousness, which even in our Bible is spelled S-U-N, the coming of the Son of Righteousness. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. You can imagine the prophet Malachi standing with this message from the Lord God. How did he see it? How did he understand it? The promise of the sacred fire is the only hope for salvation, for the consuming of the records of the past. When you believe and accept the responsibility for karma, you know that reincarnation is true. Then how do you resolve the problem of sin lifetime after lifetime? It makes one very humble. One must bend the knee before the Son of Righteousness and realize that only the intercession of the Godhead is sufficient for the consuming of these records. It has never been successfully accomplished by psychotherapy or regression. To simply know what the deeds are and even to experience some resolution within oneself because of that knowledge does not erase the record. And sooner or later, the record will cycle through the etheric body, the mental body, the desire body, and one will experience it physically unless the sacred fire root it out and cleanse it before it become physical. With the coming of the living word and the living Christ, the Lord our righteousness into your temple, which is figured on the chart behind me as the middle figure, the Holy Christ self. There is a great heat and there is a great consuming. It is not the fire of hell. It is the fire of Almighty God. And the heat is the chemicalization that occurs when there is the consuming in these four vehicles of that which is not of the light. It is an experience and a trial by fire, which Paul spoke of. He saw it also, and he received his instruction directly from the Master Jesus who confronted him on the road to Damascus. Thus the burning up of the stubble, the burning up of all the proud and they that do wickedly, Instead of thinking of this as people and other people besides oneself, you can see that this is a tremendous prophecy for the clearing of the subconscious by the hosts of the Lord, by the Son of Righteousness. The causes we have set in motion that do wickedly, that bring to pass upon ourselves that which is not good, can be burned up, shall be stubble. Neither root nor branch of our own miscreation or misuse of the light of God will be left. And here is the promise. Unto you that fear my name 
shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked. The treading down of the cause is set in motion, the karma itself. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The resolution of harmony between the generations is the resolution of karma. It is karma that separates family member from family member. Why is it so? Jesus said, And thy enemies shall be they of thine own household. The household he was speaking of is your own inner consciousness. And then those nearest to you. Why is this so? Because we have an assignment in this life. It is to come into embodiment and love those whom we have wronged most. We have an assignment to love and to love and to love and to forgive and forgive and forgive. We forgive our own members by demanding they rise higher in harmony. We do not tolerate the entrance of hatred and discord and anger within our body temples because we love God too much. We love our own soul because God has made that soul. God has ordained that soul to return to the very heart of sacred fire, to his own central sun. And he has sent that son of righteousness to you as your own holy Christ self. Therefore, love is the way of healing because love is harmony. And all disorders of the four lower bodies proceed from our breaking of that law of harmony. You cannot reap darkness if you sow only in the light of harmony. It is a wondrous moment to realize that through the teachings of the Ascended Masters, through the teachings of Saint Germain, we can unravel the mystery of life. What is the greatest mystery of life we would resolve? Is it not human suffering? Is it not a mystery to all people who undergo that suffering? Do they not cry out, why, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord, why has this come upon me? From their hospital beds, from their homes, all over the planet, human suffering. And it remains a mystery because the religions of the West have left out the greatest teaching of the prophets of the Old and New Testament, the teaching of the law of karma and reincarnation. As it now stands, many people believe God has forsaken them or that he is unjust, or if they have not entered that consciousness, they have no sense of accountability. They are fatalistic about their diseases, even about old age. People think they have to experience old age as though it were some immutable law. Old age itself is the result of mankind's karma. Once we lived in bodies up to 900 years, and then the edict went forth, three score and ten, because of the misuse of the divine spark. Thus, even the shortened lifespan is karmic. Thus, by the transmutation of karma, people ought to be able to lengthen the cycles of their service as God counts those cycles. All things are made possible to us if we enter in with God to be co-creators with him. God created you 
to be a co-creator with him. He gave you free will and a certain amount of energy, not unlimited as it used to be, because we have misused free will to misuse God's energy. We still have enough energy left at our command to get ourselves into a lot of trouble and to also recreate ourselves. So you see, it is not the waving of a magic wand. It is the work of the Son of God. Jesus said, work while you have the light. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The work of God is the other side of his word. The apostles said to Jesus, what shall we do to work the works of God? And he said, believe on the one sent. The one sent is prophesied, the son of righteousness, your holy Christ self. What must you believe then? You must believe that this Christ self, your real self, can come into your temple as you work with that Christ self. Jesus explained the balance. My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Thus it is the fine line of the balance we understand God as the doer, but we are the instrument. The instrument must be fully cooperative in the hand of the maker. God created sons and daughters in order that we might be raised up as co-creators with him. Now, if you want to raise up your son or daughter in the equestrian arts, to ride a horse perfectly, in perfect form? Will you suddenly enter in, in the midst of the lessons? Take your child from the horse and say, now I'm going to do it for you. Deprive that child of the exercise and the day-by-day -day perfecting of himself until he can win the prize. The blue ribbon is his. Will you deprive him of the joy and the experience of the victory. We seem to understand these things in this life and in this world, but when it comes to religion and the things of the spirit, we become like little children and we expect life to be a fairy tale story of instantaneous salvation, instantaneous resurrection with no co-creative work of ourselves. The sons of God are in the earth to teach the children of God that there is a path of salvation to be followed. Therefore, why do I come? I come here this evening in great joy to make the call to Almighty God for intercession by his angels and his saints to assist you in your own work. God has not left you alone. It is not as though we would think that by our mere work or even application of the law that these things should come to pass. It is the necessary ingredient which we lay upon the altar of God. And when the offering is acceptable, he extends his grace. And therefore it is true. We are saved by grace and not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. And therefore you will never enter the kingdom by your own prowess or adeptship. It is the grace of the living word in you that says, yes, the offering is acceptable. I will endow it with a flame. So there is no formula for healing or for entering the kingdom of God. Let no man be deceived. The living formula is unique to you, and it is the gift of love, and it is up to you to resolve that formula. We have all of the teachings of the world's great religions and avatars, but the application by the flame of love is unique. And you will know when you have won by the entrance into your temple of the Son of God. 
the great promise to the loving and the obedient disciple is that the Father and the Son take up their abode in his temple. Is there any greater goal in life, any greater desire to be desired? When we contemplate the mystery of God indwelling in us, it becomes the supreme goal. Not the healing of this or that problem. These become very incidental. All of a sudden we realize that we are almost sidetracked in seeking healing here and there. What we really want is God totally in our temple and our souls totally in him. We seek healing as a means to an end, not as an end. My counsel is, do not seek healing as an end in itself, that your life will become easier with less troubles and more pleasure and greater freedom for your limbs. Seek healing because you desire to master the science of love, because you know through love you will meet your God. That is the reason we are here. And therefore, we also accept his judgments. Won't you form a line to my right if you desire me to pray for you? Alleluia, amen, amen, alleluia, amen. The preceding public access program has been presented through the assistance of Church Universal and Triumphant, Box A, Malibu, California, 90265. If you would like to know more, call this number or write this address.